Well, well, well. Fox is back in the State of Decay 2 Lethal Zone, and today we're we'll talking about how good is Knight's Family Drive-In. Looks like I also forgot to take care of my character because I do want to go out and squish some play guards because we're going to need to earn some money. And that would be a pretty good idea, but let me go ahead and just patch myself up a little bit. And let's take a look at the base. So, Knight's Family Drive-In is going to be a, it's, it's basically a two slot base, not technically a two large slot base because it, it is true that you can't reconfigure the, um, the theater, but the theater is something that you would probably want, so I don't think it's unfair to call it a two, two large facility. If you want, maybe you can call it like a one and three quarters f facilities just because you it's true that you can't technically adjust them. Uh, but you do get one large facility that you can control and then you do have access to four small facilities as well as the concession kitchen, which is a level two kitchen. Uh, you get access to the bathroom, which is a latrine, and you get access to a gate tower, which is a... What do you call it? I can't even think of it now. A, um, a watchtower. So how good is this? That is the big question. And it's really hard to say that it's not good. Now, I originally did not give... <coughs> excuse me. I originally did not give uh, a particularly good rating to Knight's Family Drive-In when I originally rated the bases. And the reason for that is because there was only a standard zone at the time. Now that they've increased the difficulty, I would say this base has gained a lot of value that it did not originally have. And that's because the, basically in standard zone, it was not hard to train characters. Characters could be trained very easily, especially if your morale was halfway decent. It was not hard to train. It, your, your characters could get leveled up very easily, is what I'm basically saying. Now, in Nightmare Zone, and certainly Lethal Zone, uh, this isn't really the case. Your characters are much harder to level up. And also, you get serious morale penalties. Morale penalties that are, like, pretty devastating to your community. And the thing is that the drive-in theater is also a very expensive facility. You need to have a sheriff leader. Sometimes that's not a problem. Sometimes it's easy to get a sheriff leader. Sometimes it is a problem though. Sometimes you have trouble finding that one particular leader that you want. And it's very nice that this solves that for you. Another thing is that this is a, a facility that requires a large quantity of uh, building materials. How many do you need? You need like... You need like 35 just to... Uh, you need like 35 to get to level 3. And you need like, I think, 25 to get to level 2. And I think you need 12 to build the, the level 1. So it's a lot. And keep in mind that you take that number, divide it by five, and that's how many rucksacks you are going to need in order to construct this crazy facility. And what do you know? This facility gives it to you automatically. That's pretty strong. That's pretty awesome. Finish it off. And so for a facility that does so much for you, it's so powerful, it's going to be your the main thing that solves your influence problems. And it will also be the main thing that solves your training problems on a difficulty where morale is really bad, training is really inconvenient. It's just so hard to just not take it. It's just, they're just giving it to you. They're like, you grab this and you're going to solve your, your... You're going to solve so many problems in the game. It's the reason why the lounge is just so so good and as a result it's really hard to not recommend this base like this base is really really strong you still get another large facility uh, that you know in this case I chose the trade depot 
And for, for good reason, the trade depot is just a very simple way to solve your resource problems. I was hoping to get a... I was hoping that we'd have a med kit available, but it's it's not that big a deal. I see a bloater over there. So basically, if you do those two things, if you build a lounge level three, well, you don't have to build a lounge level. You start with a lounge level three, but if you go for the trade depot and the lounge, then or the the, the drive-in theater, which you're going to have automatically, you are going to have almost all of your problems in the game solved. Your characters are going to be really well trained up. You're going to be able to max out all those skills. Uh, don't forget that the training also affects your fifth skills, meaning uh, you don't have to spend the very many resources getting those skills leveled up. Like, if you want to level up medicine, you know, normally you'd have to, like, activate some abilities. You'd have to, like, manually level it up. That's not the case with uh, the lounge. It's going to save you a lot of resources being able to use it. And then if you use something like, you know, like, it, it doesn't really matter what you use for your second large facility. Like I said, I would personally choose the trade depot. That would help you finish the base. You know, you could call in different merchants for, like, materials and whatnot. That's what I would personally recommend. But, you know, you don't, it, it's not a necessity. But whatever you put in there, it's going to be pretty good. I mean, unless you put, like, the generator in, like, the uh, solar generator. Let's get you out of here. Love that door ability there. Slamming through the door is always nice. Mm, I'm a little vulnerable, so I think I'm just going to get in the car here. So, in addition to that, you do get four small facilities. Uh, four small facilities, that is kind of like the basic quantity that I think is good. And the reason for that is because, well, you can build a workshop, you can build a infirmary, and then you can build both of the other training facilities, because remember, they do give you bonus stats. The gym gives you, you know, you can look right here. The gym is going to give you the plus 20 health, and the shooting range is going to give you the plus 20 stamina. And so it's just, just really good. And, you know, the what you would be missing would be... What you would be missing is the crafting still, which would allow you to make a ton of money. But you know what? It's, it's okay. Sure, you'd love to have the crafting still, but, I mean, this is like a mid-game base. And for something that just gives you access to an awesome training facility, whatever. You know, you, you can't have it all. And you don't need it all, because this thing is giving you just about everything. Technically, you could take another base, and you could build something better than Knight's Family Drive-In, no doubt about it. You know, if you had... If you had five large or if you had two large facilities and five small... Yes. You could invest the materials, and you could build something better. Because you'd have an extra fifth facility, and if you wanted to, you could absolutely build a lounge. You'd want to build a lounge, because the lounge is good. But the thing is that this base, it just lets you get, do it immediately. So, um, Nice Family Drive-In, it's not a base that I would say, it's not like a permanent base. It's just a base that, if you're playing on a higher difficulty, and you've got like a fresh start going on, it's just a really helpful base that is a humongous power spike. You go there, and you're just going to be able to train all your characters up. You know, go ahead, just go in, recruit your characters, make your characters really strong, and, you know, while you've stayed there and leveled them up, like what I'm doing right now, then you can just kind of move on and do other things. Let me go ahead and shut these doors. And then we can get back to smashing. Depending on how they get in here, I might be able to pull some shenanigans off. Come on, let me get it. We got it. I'm going to intentionally run through the fire to set myself on fire through here, set that on fire behind me. 
and overall we're looking pretty good. I, I just want to clear this area of play guards. Well, that's what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be clearing the play guards as we go, because then we earn money in the process, and we free up the area, you know, we can loot things. But overall, I gotta say, yeah, yes, you know, you know, I, I want to say, like, I think both of the reviews, this review and the old review, I think they're both true. Like, in the old one, I think you should just go directly into an even better base, like a base that offers even more customization. Because remember, standard zone, which is what that review, th there was only a standard zone originally. That is the kind of base where you know, it wouldn't really be needed. You don't really, you know, you, you, obviously you'll take more morale. Morale is not a bad thing. But morale was not that hard to max out in State of Decay, uh, standard zone on State of Decay 2. But on the other hand, um, EXP is also not hard to max out. Like, it's just not that difficult, especially if your morale is okay to begin with, which, once again, is a lot easier to do in, in standard zone. You're going to level up pretty darn quickly. Now, it would still be convenient. There's no doubt about that. I've never questioned that. Even on standard zone, it'd be convenient. On standard zone, the training would be even more powerful. You would get even more skills. So, you know, I'm not saying you wouldn't benefit from the base. But I didn't feel it was quite as necessary. Another thing is that it, it's not as hard to build your base on standard zone. So, you could just go to another base, right? And from that other base, you could have... Oh, I heard the door. There we go. Stamina. I think it's almost down. I can't keep this up. Concentrating on um just wanna get my stamina back. Don't know where that feral is. I hear him, like I, his voice is a little deeper than the other zombies. So I, I know he's there. Yeah, that's he's still there. That's him right there. He just burned himself, so I'm going to go for some swings here. There he is right there. Put a fire behind me so that if he runs through, it'll ignite himself. And we've destroyed all of those play guards. But that's why I, I still feel like there's people like, whoa, Fox, like you're going to talk good about Knight's Family Driving. You didn't think it was very good originally. The context is that the addition of Nightmare Zone and then eventually Lethal Zone, that totally changes the base. Uh, it's also, it's similar to what I thought about, honestly, like Scent Block and everything. I didn't think Scent Block was very good in State of Decay Standard Zone. I'm starting to feel terrible. Because uh, the, the enemies were so weak that you didn't really need the invisibility. The enemies were small enough in number that you, you didn't really need the invisibility. But now that the enemies are way, way more deadly and there's a ton of play guards to have to smash, yeah, then the, the Zed biochems became quite useful. And that's exactly the case with this base. This base, I would say, was originally kind of overkill, you know, with uh, morale, overkill with training. But the thing is, on the low, on the higher difficulties, you that's what you need. You need overkill. Like, those, those enemies can be a real pain. There's enemies everywhere. They're very likely to kill fresh characters. It's re really awesome if you can level up a character's combat skill and max out their health from the safety of your home. Like, that is such a, a powerful effect. Let me see if they're going to invade. There's also skills that are just kind of a pain. Like, I think stealth is kind of annoying to level up personally. I mean, there you go. You can level up shooting without actually shooting any bullets. And that's really good. On, on lethal zone, like, bullets are expensive. And so now you can level them up without having to worry about it. Look at all these skills. And you can see right here, Medicine is leveling up. Let me check my other characters to see what we got. Construction, Chemistry, Shooting. Okay, we only have one Medicine character, so let's go with Pathology. You said you'd take care of it. Any updates? And you can see just how many of our characters are just like leveling up like crazy right now. Powerhouse, uh, Scouting, Assault. 
Kind of want to see what you've got here. Assault, powerhouse, and scouting. Um, it doesn't matter really there. Powerhouse and scouting. Endurance. Let me see if I can get this. Oh, no, the juggernaut went down. So as you can see, Bouncing Boris, the best solution for killing Juggernauts, destroys them in one hit if the uh, if the throw is decent. I want to wait to see what his cardio skill is before I pick that. Um, gunslinging. Powerhouse Scouting. Endurance. Doesn't really matter, I guess I'll do that. Chemistry, let's go with Pharma. Um, assault. The reason I choose Assault is just for the enhanced, uh, the increased ammo capacity. Powerhouse. Scouting. I don't go with Stealth there just because, you know, this is a loud character. She doesn't need Stealth. And you can just see how many characters we are just power leveling them up. All because of this ability just giving out so, so much EXP. It's just so, so good. And it doesn't cost... I mean, like, okay, the cost for training is the the amount of materials needed to set up the level 3 lounge. Once you have that up, though, yeah, it's not like this where you gotta spend um, ammo to learn training, you gotta spend food and medicine. It's not that much. Only one food, one medicine. It's not that big of a deal. But still, it's like, it's just the fact that you don't have to spend further resources and the thing is, even when your characters are maxed out, you've got all, you got like the movie night. In this case, you've got classic movie night. And it's, it's just so, so strong. Materials for everyone. Yeah, I'll do it. You're the best. Let's switch characters. Throw all of this in. Oh, you need something to guard the base with. Um, I don't know. G17. Uh, who are we going to play as? I'm pretty sure everyone has maxed out on their... Yeah, it doesn't matter who we play as now. I guess I'll play as Peter because uh, he's the one who's going to be leveling up soon. And I just want to be able to pick his abilities as soon as they level up. So here's the launcher. Then we can do this. Let's grab any cures that we've got. Oh, we should be able to make strong painkillers now. All we need now is the the pill press, but we can we can buy one of those. And then we have a way to make an absolute truck ton of money. In fact, let's go ahead and call in for a medicine trader. Medicine trader is a guaranteed way of getting it. Oh, we need the. I got the mess you want. We need the materials. You good for it? Where is? I'm exhausted. So the I think it's on the second floor. Right here. Workshop. Okay, they need materials. Good away. news is that we have a lot of materials because we were mass producing them. Sounds like someone is not doing good in there. That's fine, I guess. And uh, let's begin making the road trip there. Mm. It's going to be quite the road trip, too. In fact, I should probably grab another canister of fuel. Just in case. So to conclude my thoughts on Knight's Family Diner, or my Knight's Family Drive-In, oh, speak of the devil. Let's just get it with training. We can choose later. We'll, we'll choose once we get there in our destination. We're on the clock after all. They're going to want those building materials. So to conclude my thoughts, I do think it's definitely a good base on the higher difficulties. If you're playing on Nightmare Zone or if you're playing on Lethal Zone, I definitely think it's worth it to swing by as your mid-game base. You will want to move into something stronger later on. But in the beginning, when you're still kind of building up your power... I think it's an absolutely fantastic choice because 
Uh, you don't need the you don't need basically like like full like fifty or sixty material. Uh, it, it requires a lot to set up that level three lounge on it's lethal zone. Level three lounge does not play on its building material requirements, so it's going to save you a ton of resources. You get instant access to it. Uh, you don't need a sheriff leader, so you know if you if you're just in one of these situations where you just happen to be sunk. Now, when the Forever Communities comes out, that's not going to be as big of a deal because, remember, you'll be able to, you know, recruit people from your legacy community. And if you do that, you can basically send a character into your legacy bank, one of every leader type. And if you do one of every leader type, then anytime you have the... Okay, I probably should have just... Come on. No, we're stuck. Probably should have just drove like a normal person, but here I am wanting to be impatient. But yeah, uh, uh, when you get the legacy communities, if you ever run into a situation where... Oh, did it put me back up here? No, it put me down there. Oh, convenient. Okay, let's go this way, I think. Looks quiet for now, but as long as that play card is nearby, yep. this place won't ever feel safe. Okay, now we can actually make it on the road again. But yeah, if you're on a higher difficulty, you want to jump in there, make it a temporary base, power up your community, and then sure, yeah, move into an even bigger base like the barricaded strip mall. Or change, if you want to do it, you can change maps as well. It's definitely worth it as a temporary visit. You can, of course, construct your own level 3 lounge on any base you want that has a large facility available to it. But it is undeniably convenient that you are saving so many rucksacks of materials, especially on Lethal Zone. That said, though, on lower difficulties where the buildings aren't pre-looted and there's tons of building materials everywhere and there are no penalties to building construction, meaning, you know, the construction rates or the, the cost of constructing buildings is exactly the, the baseline level, then you know you probably can skip it. You may not. You may not. You may find that you don't even need a lounge level three. But once again, on the higher difficulties, I think that it's an extremely effective base, and I do recommend using it. What? I was pushing the button. Okay. So I think these guys are friendly. So they're about to become allies. Let's see what we get. Thank you. See ya. Don't just stand out there. Huh? Jogging Come buddies. In. That one's honestly not bad. Got anything useful you're looking to unload? All right. Fuel. We definitely need fuel. I'm gonna buy all the fuel. I'll take your whole stock. One thing I will say about the Knights Family Drive-In is that the uh, the enhanced. I think we can help each other out. All right. The, basically, the upgrades to the lounge level 3, I don't, I don't think they really matter. You know, like, they're, they're like a very minor upgrade, so it, the main thing is that the lounge level 3, just period, the fact that it just auto-trains people and delivers a huge amount of morale, that's the main thing. I don't think that the minor, the minor bonuses that the drive-in theater, like the super version of the lounge level 3, I don't think it really, really matters. The main thing you're looking for is just the fact that you are... You are getting a lounge without having to pay for it, or qualify for it if you're having leader problems. But yeah, that's what I think. Uh, let me know what you think, though. If you guys are enthusiastic of the... The mall? You know what? There's only, there's two play guards here. I, maybe I should just destroy these while I'm here. What's the harm in it? You have powerhouse? No, you have backpacking. Okay, never mind. I can't destroy them. Backpacking and resourcefulness. I love that combo. Lets you carry so much more loot. And, um, I don't know. Let's just check our allies over here. See what we got for sale. Buying and trading. Big part of Lethal Zone. I'm hearing of more people giving Lethal Zone their first try uh, on the Twitch. Tr oh, we got to choose our skills as well. On the Twitch community, you know, we got a guy named Gator Dead. Gator Dad is trying out Lethal Zone for the first time, and the thing holding him back is the trading. And he said in the previous levels of difficulty, he never really had to do any trading, and Lethal Zone is the first one where he sees, like, the humongous value of trading, and absolutely trading. Um, you know, I, I, I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised that 
you know, someone might not engage in a lot of trading just because, well, the truth is that a lot of resources are pretty abundant normally. Useful, you're looking to unload. Sounds good. Let me go ahead and throw this stuff in. And as a result, you probably don't have to do trading. And the thing is that if you don't have to do trading, then you're probably not going to be too prepared for the lethal zone because lethal zone trading, you know, there definitely are some nuances to it. Like there's, you need, the way I illustrated it is you need to look at lethal okay. zone like you are like an alchemist. Yeah, and right. as an alchemist, like everything you look at, you're not just looking at the physical thing for what it obviously is. What did we get from these guys? Scavenging partners? That kind of blows. I don't really need that. But as an alchemist, when you look at something, you're not just looking at it what it literally is. Like, if you're looking at a gun, you're not like, this is a gun that shoots bullets. Well, you're thinking, this is a gun. This is something I can sell for influence. So I can transmute a gun into influence. And influence can be transformed into just about anything else in the game. You could turn it into resources, into ammo, into weaponry, uh, into more allies. You can do so many things with more influence. So, and that's an important way to think about it. But like another way to look at it, it's a gun. You know, you can use it as a weapon. You know, maybe it's a good weapon. You know, that that's, so it's a more specific kind of weapon. It's a good weapon. But it's also parts. Like, maybe it doesn't sell for very much. Like, a Model 870 shotgun, it sells for, like, 20-something influence, but it scraps for, like, 50 or 60 parts. On my way to you. In other words, it's very valuable in other ways. Like, you know, the 870 might not be a super good weapon, and it might not be worth much in influence, but you could scrap it, and every bit of scrap is worth one influence, but you could also use it to build something. So perhaps... You're looking at this Model 870, and what you're looking at isn't a weapon. You're actually looking at a repair kit. Because you're like, I can scrap this, and that's going to give me enough to build a repair kit. Now, you know, you're not going to get 100 on its own unless you have a salvage furnace. But it's going to pay a decent chunk of that repair kit. And if you have an auto mechanic giving you a discount, then, yeah, it's even more likely to be a... Your, that shotgun, in truth, is actually a repair kit. That's the way you. That's the way you want to think. Oh, so here, this is awesome. So this is a way. This is a repeating quest. We're gonna look for lumber. Okay. And what we can do like a plan. is uh, we can do it over and over again and continuously get building materials as long as we don't complete the quest. So let's head on over here. It looks like it's in the that you know the call to sec with. Um, you know where we got that big boost of materials in the beginning? It's not that far, so we'll go and do it. And all we got to do is complete the quest and not co not turn it in. Or, or rather, we need we go we go get the building materials, but we don't complete the quest. We don't turn it in because it's it's a perfectly good rucksack of building materials. We can just keep throwing it in the basin, so it, it's essentially going to become a repeatable quest for building materials and that's exactly what I'm looking to make out of it. That's what I mean though when I'm talking about you want to look at things in how you can see multiple values in a particular thing. This quest at the face value is just a, a cannibal quest. Maybe they pay you some influence for it. But what I see is a constant trickle of even more building materials. Now, here we are. Let me squish these fools. And chop these fools. So this is another example. Like this weapon here, why would I ever repair this weapon? The machete is, an, is a respectable weapon, but there's definitely better than it. And if I have a better weapon, especially a supply of better weapons, why would I want to? Why would I want to spend 91 re parts on it? Remember, 91 parts—that's 91 influence. Do I really want to spend 91 influence on repairing a weapon that's just, you know, reasonable? Now the answer is that could depend. Now, maybe I don't have a better replacement, or maybe I don't have a comparable item or an upgrade to it. And in that case, I probably still would be a little hesitant to repair it. 
Because once again, like, 91 influence, or ni 96 parts. Like, look, look at this. This thing is 70. Now, we're getting a 30 part discount, but normally it would be 100, 100 parts. So if you didn't have an auto mechanic, that thing is basically, you're, you're basically paying 100 parts. And now, would you want to do that? Now, to me, the answer is no, I wouldn't want to do that. Like, that would be a, a waste of resources. But that's the way you want to look at it. Looks like we've got this nice bloater here. But fortunately, we can go off the road. And if you think of, if you look at all the items in that kind of way, where they're, they're not just the item as their description, but they also have an influence value, and they also have a potentially a parts value, because they, maybe they're an item that can be scrapped. If you think of it from that perspective, you're going to become a lot better at the economy, and you'll probably wind up memorizing a, a few different items. You don't need to memorize everything, you know, that's... I think that'd be a, you know, probably be a waste of time memorizing like every single little thing in the game, but you know just try to just try to remember a few useful ones that are fairly common, a few decent ones, and I think what you'll get at the end of the day is uh, way more money, way more parts, and you're going to be struggling a lot less in the lethal zone. Anyways, I'm just going to pull the plug here because we got more field work to do and whatnot. So let me know what you think down in the comment section. Like the video if it was entertaining. Subscribe for future State of K2 content. Of course, remember that you don't have to be good. To get good.